Some time ago, I made a video where I explained how each charm came into existence. That didn't completely explain how each charm actually functions, though, so here is a video about what exactly every charm does. The Wayward Compass is said to whisper the bearer's location whenever a map is open. I think this means that it imparts some knowledge of the bearer's location relative to the area they're in and produces a visual representation of it on the map, as we see in-game. Gathering Swarm produces a swarm of flies that pick up scattered geo. Charms are said to contain some of the soul of the bug whose dying wish created it, and for this charm it is likely that soul which manifests into the flies. Stalwart Shell makes the knight immune to damage after a hit for longer. I've theorized before that this brief immunity may have something to do with Void leaking out of the knight's shell when they take damage, but it could also be some natural defense system, which in this case would be enhanced by the charm. Soul Catcher and Soul Eater simply extract more soul from a creature. Some soul always comes out of a creature's body when they're hit with the knight's nail, which the knight then absorbs, and these charms make more of the creature's soul exit their body and go out into the air to be gathered. Shaman Stone is said to contain the knowledge of past generations of snail shamans on how to make their spells more powerful. When this charm is equipped, the knight has access to this knowledge and uses it as they're casting spells. Dashmaster decreases the Mothwing Cloak's cooldown time, allowing the knight to use it at a slightly faster rate. Specifically, the charm is probably making the cloak more aerodynamic. Sprintmaster allows the knight to walk faster along the ground. It could make their body more aerodynamic, or just give them more energy so that their body can move along faster. Grub Song gives the knight soul when they take damage. Soul has to come from somewhere, though, so the charm either generates it or takes it from the surrounding air. Grubberfly's elegy fires beams of energy from the bearer's weapon, and the charm likely generates those same beams within it. As for Fragile slash Unbreakable Heart, I've speculated that the masks of the knight's health represent layers of their shell, so this charm simply adds on two more of those layers. Fragile slash Unbreakable Greed seems to either extract more geo hidden within an enemy's shell, or magically generate more geo whenever some is gained from an enemy. These extra pieces of geo always seem to be glowing. Fragile slash unbreakable strength likely sharpens and refines the bearer's weapon, which allows it to do more damage than it could on its own, similar to how the nailsmith improves the knight's nail by making it sharper and adding more points of refinement to it. Spell Twister likely either puts more power into less soul, allowing a spell to be made from less soul than usual, or compacts the power of a spell into less soul. Steady Body keeps the knight from recoiling backwards when they hit something with their nail, so it seems to be negating the force on the knight's body which would normally cause it to move. Heavy Blow sort of does the opposite by putting more force into the hits that the knight deals with their nail, that force pushing enemies backward. Long Nail and Mark of Pride extend the area affected by the force of the knight's nail. This fits with the Wanderer's journal description of Long Nail extending one's aura. Fury of the Fallen is said to embody the fury of those who are about to die, so that fury is likely converted into raw energy or power which manifests as significant damage dealt by the Knight's Nail. Thorns of Agony contains coiled up thorns that expand outward in response to pain from physical injury. Balder Shell contains a hard shell that expands around the bearer in response to the focusing of soul. It seems that only the amount of soul generated at benches, which is also enough to heal all of the knight's masks of health at once, is enough to repair the shell once it has been broken through. 
Fluke Nest uses the soul that normally forms into a vengeful spirit or shade soul spell to give life to baby flukes. Soul is required to give life to most things. Defender's Crest probably works similarly to Fury of the Fallen, in this case feelings of justice and pride in being a knight creating a tangible cloud which damages wrongdoers. Akin to Fluke Nest, Glowing Womb uses soul to give life to hatchlings. The charm itself seems to act as a womb that births them. Quick Focus might use some of the power said to be contained in crystals to speed up the healing process. Since Deep Focus absorbs soul from the surrounding air and allows more healing to be done with less soul, it probably contributes soul that it has absorbed to the focusing done by the knight. The healing of one mask comes from soul that the knight has collected, and the healing of the other from soul that the charm has collected, both happening simultaneously. Lifeblood Heart and Lifeblood Core coat the knight's shell with layers of lifeblood that absorb damage instead of that damage going to the actual layers of the knight's shell. Since Joni's Blessing disallows the ability to heal by using focus, it may somehow coat the space between the layers of the knight's shell with lifeblood. Hive blood uses the power of the nectar that it's made of to heal the broken layers of the knight's shell, a process that normally requires a focus of soul. Spore Shroom seems to contain both knowledge of the Mushroom Clan's language as well as soul-sensitive spores. Sharp Shadow simply sharpens the void that surrounds the knight's body when they perform a shadow dash. Shape of Un is described as revealing the form of Un within the bearer, which implies that the transformation it does to the knight's body occurs from the inside out. Nailmaster's Glory enhances the bearer's ability to focus energy on their nail for a nail art, or just makes the focus more acute so that it can be completed in less time. Weaver Song contains silk that spawns into small weavers, as these weaverlings can be seen reforming from that silk if they get separated from the knight. Dream Wielder enhances the dream nail's function specifically, but not its power, as that requires the dream nail absorbing a certain amount of essence to be awakened. The functions enhanced are the charging and slashing of the dream nail so that it happens faster, the extraction of soul so that more soul is gathered, and the likelihood of extracting essence from living creatures as the dream nail is made better at doing so. Dream Shield generates a shield made of solid essence. This, like many of the attacks dealt by the warrior dreams, is an example of the dream realm being layered on top of the physical world, as such objects do physical damage despite being made from essence. Grimchild obviously contains the creature of the same name, which is said to be a living flame, and it also imparts knowledge of the locations of Grimkin flames, similar to what the Wayward Compass does for the bearer's own location. Carefree Melody absorbs damage that would normally be done to the knight's shell. It doesn't deflect the actual impact of a hit, though, since the delicate flower will still be destroyed even if the damage to the knight is blocked by this charm. Other charms that respond to damage being taken, such as Thorns of Agony, will also respond as they normally would. King Soul generates infinite soul, whether within itself or absorbing it from the surrounding air. Also, like the King's Brand, it is able to reveal something that the Pale King intentionally hid, that being the vessel's birthplace in the Abyss. Finally, the Void Heart gives its bearer the ability to command, control, and or pacify the Void at their will. These things seem to be done subconsciously or unconsciously, likely because the charm becomes part of its bearer upon being collected. So what do you think? Do you agree with my explanations? Which did you find most interesting? Let me know in the comments! Thank you for watching this video. 
Be sure to check out my other Hollow Knight videos and subscribe if you like what you see. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.